So you guys thought you were done with teletypes, but no, uh, uh, hardly done with the uh, model 15 and 19 over there. I was working on the reperforator. And now, before I know it, Carl and Ken reach for the SR33s, which is already taken apart. So this is the uh, one of the 8-bit successors and a grandchild of the model uh, 19, the 5-bit. And this is definitely consumer grade. So it has, is that fiberglass or plastic? We don't know. Looks like plastic to me. Plastic. So it has lots of plastic parts and this is definitely uh, not as robust was uh, spec for 20% uptime, something like that. Something right, like right. so the, can't use it all the time to print news or where it's supposed to use it all the time to print news like the Model 15. And uh, so, but much, much in cheaper. his defense, much cheaper, much faster. Right, 100, uh, 100 bars, yeah, 110. 110 instead of uh, 15.5. So this one is not in such a great shape. And also the metal is no far from the quality of the 15. I know it, it, it pitted, whereas the 15 was all just very surface stuff here i tried to remove it and nothing came out so we'll see what we do with it uh needs a lot of cleaning uh, but in the end we should get something that uh, has eight bits can be connected to a linux machine and it also handles the tape the one inch tape with the eight bits so off we go cleaning yeah <laughs> ready for it this was the state of the machine after the first overall and quite thorough cleaning. The machine was still quite grungy and we had to take it down to its main sub-assemblies. Quite a bit of rust on the tape punch, lots of grime on the code bars and the ratchet mechanism. The printhead was really bad and uh, you can see here it's really grimy. And the platen assembly had a concerting pitting rust that did not go away with the regular cleaning method. ...of my work on the carrier. It was all rusty. No more. So it looks a little cleaner now. We have, so I, I took the carriage uh, out and uh, cleaned it entirely. And this is the carriage, uh, the platen. We also took the entire disassembly detaches. So now I have a nice punch. The back removal, the motor, uh, all the stuff. So it's nice and clean. This was the toughest area to clean. And corrected a few issues. There was a spring not attached over here. Contact that was bent over there. Uh, what else did I see? A few things like that. Uh, yes, that thing was stuck. So that's one of one good things when you clean thoroughly, you'll find all kind of issues uh, before uh, you have to find them the first time you run the machine. And the power assembly or whatever you call it is complete. We changed only one component, right? Just the capacitor, and all right. the rest was just cleaning. Yeah, the rest were all good. This one guy there. Yeah. And the keyboard, that was a pain. It's so flimsy compared to the 15 and the, and the 19. So, and Carl has reassembled the rest of the chassis, so it's ready for mating the two back together. Yay. Ready, Carl? Ready, then. Let's do it. Okay. And by the way, we are fortunate to have the the documentation that was helpful. So, cables out of the way. Okay, so where does this finger? Okay, let me take a picture of that. So what I don't like with those machines, there's no a screw that yeah. holds three things, little dangling elements. So there's that tongue that needs to get in. It's man, they went through such an an, an effort to save a screw. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another repair that we had to do over there. 
look at this wiring so that that went out there and that broke the PCB just the pressure over it and man just put some you no know, engineer the space in for the wires right <laughs> Afterthought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The another fun thing is that there's this piece here that has to be put way at the bottom to connect the keyboard to the mechanism. It's a lovely thing to do, isn't it, Carl? It is a delight. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm going to do it. There you go. So I can do this in style. Mm -hmm. And you have way more room. So it's like this. How did I do it last time? I remember I used a trick of some kind. I yes. can't remember what it was. Insert it in here. There you go. I wasn't sure they were long enough to get down there. I know they are. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. All right. Done. All right. Yeah. So now we have our H plate put correctly. That's this guy. And it goes. It's sandwiched by this and that. All right. Uh, ribbon. All right. I don't know if I trust the ribbon, but it's in. Okay. So, step one is power here. Okay. Step two is turning it, I think, to the left. Turn right then. Turn left then. Why are we getting shot? The question is, is the solenoid getting energized? Yeah, right, right. Is it energized at all? Yeah. Alright, so. Uh, and then we'll work our way back. Is it uh, alternative current or? Should be DC. DC. Okay, so you will need to turn it on from the ground. Okay, try it again. No. No. Okay, so we don't have solenoid. Yeah, it has a certain. The, these the resistors that get real hot. Oh, it has a yes. nice vintage smell to it. Mmm. So our ASR33 chatters desperately and uh, Carl was suspecting uh, the, the selector, selector magnet. magnet, which um, the ASR33 is not anymore connected to the 60 milliamp, but it goes through an ampl electronic amplifier that can do 20 or 60 milliamp. And so just to make sure this guy was okay, we connected it to power supply directly without the card and and it's magneting okay so that doesn't seem to be the problem when I do it with a power supply it works so we're suspecting now the amplifier card I'm also trying to find out if this transistor which is a power transistor for the turning on the magnet Make sure it has transistor mojo to it. It yep. seems quite suspicious because we see everything coming in. But nothing come out. Right. It's uh, Motorola 18675, it is. Right, 18675, yep. And it is. And it's a good transistor. It has transistor mojo. This gate has a gain of 50, this is a little bit more than that 80. So that's not it. So we were suspecting our transistors, but then it was good. And then we looked at the card. And there's, there's a little thing that's not right with it. Broken connection. So okay. we have done a little bit of positive reinforcement here. Hopefully that will work. I'm not 100% convinced. But... All right. Uh, you got 20. Do I have 20 milliamps? You got 20 milliamps. Current limited. Yes. I see it. But I, I, at least I, I do see this guy moving. 
to look for is on this side. Is this spinning around or not? So if this is not spinning around, taking cycles, then the problem is something here is wrong, even though this is okay, not hold, selected. Okay, careful with your finger. This is not, this is working. You have 500 MA, this is idle, but something else is is wrong in here. Okay, so actually I could check if I... You have it in line mode? I put it in line mode and I turn off the fire. Right. And yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's, let, let me take the camera on it. Yes, you want to watch. I'll so we you. repaired one thing, but there's something more broken. Yes, but this is very good progress. And I think I just found out why it shatters even though our magnet uh, is uh, amplifier is no repair our magnet is working it's the range finder and uh, when i cleaned it i put it all the way back to zero so now it's doing what it should If I put it in off, that's correct, in local, it doesn't shatter. And here I have a 20 milliamp source connected here, which I will control manually. So if I do line now, Okay, small progress, we're getting there. So now if I put it on local, It should print, but it does not hear it and start anything. Break does work. Yeah, so that's that. Okay, so next step is how to make the transmitter work so we can make characters and receive them and check whether that he works. It's getting there little by little. The brushes not to fall off. Oop, did it fall off? 